Okay, hello, it's Paul Green here with another one of our regular focus on panels where I bring a panel of experts together just to look at a topic that I think will be uh, engaging to the average small business owner. Um, so this is being live streamed. Um, you might be watching it on replay either way if you're hearing me now and you've got any questions that you want to ask for the panel as we're going through it or on the replay then feel free to do that and we'll do our best to answer whatever questions uh, come up so without further ado let me just go around the uh, room and let my panelists introduce themselves so Julie Hello everybody, I'm Julie Futcher from The Sales Ace and I specialise in delivering sales training and providing sales cons consultancy to businesses. Fabulous. Serena? Hello, so I'm Serena, I'm the creator of Breakthrough Public Speaking and I help business owners speak with confidence, clarity and impact for videos, online courses or webinars. Perfect. Let me just switch off things that are going off in the background, which I forgot to do. Uh, Jackie? Yes, hi, I'm Jackie Sherman. I, the consultant's consultant. I work with standalone consultants, especially those who've come out of employment and set up on their own and now need some help and support in how to build their business. Okay. Sarah says, hi. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for tuning in. If you've got any questions, please feel to throw them at us. So um, today's topic, as you can see, or did see, oh. Hold on, what am I doing now? Breaking it. There we go. Um, so today's topic is um, looking at uh, whether you guys think a coach, mentor, business advisor is essential for a small business. Uh, that's They're all different roles. So the first thing to do is probably just to explore what you guys think the difference is are between those those different roles. Um, and then we can explore what your thoughts are on whether a small business uh, should involve any of those things. So does anybody want to have a stab at what you think the differences between those roles are? Yeah, sure. Go on, so, then, Serena, good girl. Why not? <laughs> um, I think that sometimes these terms can get really confused and that's yeah. perfectly understandable. Uh, so it's great to, to clarify that first off. I think a mentor is someone more like a guide who shows you the way, someone who's more experienced, who has been there before, um, they've been there, they've done that, and they're they're guiding you as to what you could do, what steps you can take, and so on. A coach, I think, is much more specific. So you're working on a specific skill. Let's say in my area, for instance, presentation skills, you're working with a coach to get specific feedback. So they're helping you and guide you on those specific mm -hmm. skills. So I think a coach works very much um, on a much more detailed level, whereas a mentor is someone who sees more of the big picture. Of course, there are overlaps as well, and sometimes mentors can be a little bit specific too. But overall, I think those are the, the main differences. Okay. Anybody else want to build on that or add to what Serena said? No, I, I, I agree with Serena. I think she's she's um, pulled out the meanings very well. I, I think let's put business visor because that's the other one that you've got here. I think business visor is somebody where you specifically go to for specific advice about an element of your business and it is very much advice driven um so yeah but apart from that i would agree on everything that serena has said so far we're doing well jackie yes i think uh, the other thing i always think of it as the coach is working with the client internally on their own skills and and abilities and helps them draw out of themselves um, the answers to some of their queries. Uh, whereas, whereas a mentor and an advisor tend to add new knowledge, bring new knowledge in. But I think the boundaries between the, the roles are very blurred. Mm -hmm. And most people, most people operate across those boundaries a bit as well, you know. Uh, which I think is where the confusion comes in. Mm. Yeah, it certainly can. I mean, Adam, thanks for tuning in, Adam. He's just sort of commented that a coach asks you powerful questions, a mentor has the answer to those powerful questions, which, uh, yeah, I can see that. I mean, in terms of... Uh, I think different questions. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> yeah, potentially. I mean, when, when I'm working with people, as Serena touched on, I tend to sort of drift in and out of those things sometimes you know it's a straightforward no don't do it that way whereas a coaching technique would be more for them to find out themselves that yeah. the, the way to do it so i think those hats to an extent you know are interchangeable depending on what's you know what's in front of you at the time so absolutely 
So to get back to the uh, the question in hand, then do do you think that that every business owner should have one of those, all of those, some of those, none of those? Julie, we'll come to you first. Now this is a really interesting question because I remember when I first set up my business, somebody who um, put themselves forward as a as a business coach marched up to me in a networking meeting and said, "You should have a business coach." my response at that point was i don't need one um and at that point i was looking at what they did was more about getting you to achieve what you wanted to achieve which in my time at that i didn't need help with now subsequently as the business has gone on i have turned to business advisors and i've turned to business mentors for help and support to be as a sounding board because as a as a business owner you it's a lonely place to be when you're on your own so i don't like the word should um should for me is something that you know it's it's not a good word i think for me business owners um should should need to see that there are options out there to help and support them with their businesses for help them to achieve the goals that they want to achieve um, and look at what skills they need accordingly mm. which is a rather long-winded answer so i'm so sorry about that uh, that's that's all right we've got time i've got nothing else to do so you know let's <laughs> roll on jack, jack, jackie what are your thoughts my my first thought in response to that julie was a coach who says you should probably isn't a very good coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly, Jackie. <laughs> and certainly haven't read you properly. Oh, so, no. <laughs> um, I, I, I think, I, think um, I benefited from a mentor early on, um, coming out of uh, employment myself into commercial, from, from public sector to uh, commercial world was quite a leap in uh, in culture but also in how to meet people how to how to get going how to do this thing called networking um, and I certainly needed help and support I needed knowledge in the first instance and the right um, the right person to give me that knowledge but at various times I've needed people who would give me pure coaching when I had self doubt or self or obstacles that were getting in my way that were that um, that, that approach was the right approach to, to go down. So I think you need different people at different stages of your business. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I, agree. I mean, if I needed presentation skills, um, then you would go to somebody like uh, Serena, wouldn't you? Um, you wouldn't necessarily go to other people who'd be really good at perhaps the finance of your business you need to choose the right advisor the right support for what you need at the moment mm, exactly absolutely serena what are your what are your thoughts on it um well firstly some great points already a absolutely julie whenever you hear the word should i think most people do tend to think no okay i'm definitely not going to do that right now then and it's not about feeling should it is this going to support me if so then yes i want it and like jackie was saying you know different people for different things it's, it's so essential and this is the great thing about people having specialist skills because you know you can go to them for that very specific coaching uh, personally i see huge value in both coaching and mentoring and oddly enough, before I started my business, I already had uh, a lot of value for mentoring in particular, because as a Toastmaster, then mentoring is a big part of the Toastmaster community. And we mentor uh, in public speaking and leadership skills, for instance. So lots of different areas we, we have mentoring in. So even before I started my business, I really felt this was really important. And of course, joining the business community when my, my business was still new, I had the wonderful opportunity to, to have Julie here as my mentor. And that was hugely valuable for me. Thank so you. I feel that there's so much value to be had in it, uh, but then also coaching for for those specific skills, because you you really uh, benefit so much from getting I feel specific feedback so that you're aware of your strengths. Sometimes we don't know what our strengths are, and then we think, wow, what I'm good at this. This is fantastic. And sometimes we know where to know where our weaknesses are and get the, the relevant support. 
So personally, I feel that that both mentors and coaches are, are really essential, uh, especially in the early days of a business. Mm -hmm. I think, so, sorry, yeah, go on. Yeah. No, go ahead, Julie. Uh, I, what I was going to say was, uh, you know, you, you, you spoke, Serena, about people um, reaching out. I have experienced some people who feel that turning to a coach, a mentor, a business advisor, it, it can be seen as a failure yeah. because they don't know themselves. And my sort of response back to them was, well, how are you supposed to know? If nobody's ever trained you or spoken to you or, or talked to you about various elements, how are you supposed to know? Again, you know, in business, when you set up a business, there's so much to consider and there's just so much to go on. But also when you're employed as well, um, you know, all of coaches, mentors, advisors are really helpful to help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve within that particular role. It's, there's no shame on it. In actual fact, I look to people and I think people are very strong if they can step back and identify er areas that they need support with and need help with, because that means they're very self-aware. And that is a really big key skill, I think, in running a business and, and being successful in what you do. Yeah. I think also when, when you become successful, you often need, <laughs> um, <laughs> you often need it more Mm. more than ever because uh, success brings its own challenges doesn't it yeah agreed the popular one at the moment is sort of the imposter syndrome and how did i get here you know <laughs> little old me but uh, other other sort of challenges like success will often bring a change of a role am i going to grow how am i going to grow how, what am i going to do next all sorts of things um so it's, you're absolutely right, Julie. It's not just about failing. I think you it's don't go so... to a coach because you're failing. You go to a coach because you need um, that dispassionate support, critique, help um, yeah. to find your next your next thing, whatever it is, whatever stage absolutely. you're at. Hmm. I love what you were saying about self-aware as well. I think that's a massive part um, in in life, but also in business. If you have this awareness that you're also uh, more open to be able to receive feedback <laughs> because that can be hard sometimes especially if you know it's something oh, i need to, to work on or something but having that self-awareness actually gives you so much more strength mm. um, to, to recognize those weaknesses and and to work on them so to be more logical about it rather than emotional let's say where you can just think of, right i've got i got i've got this thing that i really need to work on you know who can i go to and then then just go for it and 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 develop your strengths based from mm -hmm. on that within that self-awareness okay. yeah, Adam, adam's made a few comments so i'll just bring them up on on screen thanks adam i uh, said so he's never had a coach uh, but has always had a business mentor uh, someone that's uh, been there and done it i think that's that is quite valuable you know that there is no reason to reinvent the wheel uh, i don't think um I, I sometimes do worry though that if if you're using a uh, a mentor that may have been successful um it doesn't necessarily mean that you know you couldn't go down a different path or you couldn't create something different you know based on that feedback and he's also put another comment growth brings its own set of problems and challenges just as decline just as decline does which is what you guys said mm -hmm. um so thanks for that adam um what was i else was i going to say something popped into my head and being old popped straight back out again <laughs> um i, I guess Forget, I guess for me, I see uh, uh, having a coach is more of a personal thing, whereas a business advisor stroke mentor is more of a practical thing. Would you agree with that and not agree with that? Or do you think yeah. choosing on yeah. choosing? Well, I think a coach can work on really personal issues, for instance. You could work on really deep fears that you have of something. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can go on a deeper level, I think, with a coach. Of course, sometimes mentors do this as well. Again, there are there are many overlaps, but I think overall, you would almost expect that from a coach because especially when you're dealing with starting your own business, there are some really some core fears that can arise with that and insecurities that it would be a good thing, for instance, to, to work on those or whether it's uh, your business or presentation skills, the fear of selling, the fear of networking, all kinds of things that really mm -hmm. Can, can go deeply with you and there's nothing more personal than really going into your fears you know mm -hmm. that's unbelievably personal 
And that's how I think a really powerful coach can be hugely instrumental to over mm -hmm. helping you overcome those fears and moving, moving forward. Whereas you might not expect that necessarily from a mentor, I'd say that's what I would think anyway. Mm. Well, yeah. But I think also a coach, it's not just your personal fears, is it? There's other, other limiting beliefs you can have about the way the world operates. And it's really useful to have somebody um, help you look at it from another perspective. And that can be internalized through sort of coaching methods. But I think mentors can also help you see the world from a different view. But um, some of it can be quite deeply buried in the back of your brain, mm -hmm. can't it? And, has yeah. to be, and coaching is a spe has specific techniques of helping you bring that stuff to the fore and understand how how those limiting beliefs are holding you back. Yeah, it's only when people get that aha moment we usually call it something that they really transform and and feel and and are different as a result. I think that's something that coaching brings where perhaps mentoring and advising just gives you the, the surface level stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah's just made a, a comment. She's always had a coach and mentor in her business, uh, thinks a coach works on specific areas and issues uh, to help her move forward. And my mentor is more of a cheerleader and runs alongside me always. Now I've got an imagining, <laughs> imagining her, uh, uh, her mentor with the pom poms now as a year project. It's the way forward. <laughs> an interesting brand for a mentor, couldn't it? Yeah. I really like that cheerleader. Yeah, so do yeah, I. That's good. Because I think yeah. we forget that this person also, it can be quite lonely as a small business. Yeah. Um, and to have, have somebody supporting you, someone to bounce ideas off, but also somebody to celebrate with. Mm. You know, say, hey, well done. You know, that was brilliant. So, you know, that's that's the one thing that um, I must admit I'm really guilty of, of not celebrating successes. Um, and... It, it is interesting on my own I don't do it but when I had a big team we did mm. um, so that that's an interesting use and it is really important to celebrate those successes it really is I think that's such a great point and in fact I I do work with with a business coach and one of the things she she asks me to do is you know when I say something's gone well and she said and how are you celebrating your win <laughs> and I thought, oh well I hadn't thought about doing that and because I'd be like you, Julie, I'm not really thinking about doing that because it's just me, but why not? And I think it's a huge um, asset for you within your business because it's going to enable you to encourage yourself and working on your own, you have to be able to encourage yourself and um, in a way be your own cheerleader too, but you know, sometimes yeah. we all need that help and those reminders. And I think celebrating our wins uh, is such a helpful practice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think if, if if you're like me, then, you know, you tend to beat yourself up for the stuff that doesn't work or you don't get done, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but you never sort of think, you know, wow, really achieve something, you know, that particular day or that particular week or or whatever. It's, it's just so easy just to crack on with the next item, isn't it? And just sort of mm. let that pass. So, yeah, I do think certainly having someone uh, around that looks at the successes rather than, the you know, the issues or problems that a business might be failing, I think is, you know, sometimes overlooked, I guess. And and I think, you know, as you say, somebody overlooking that, um, the mentor can also head things off at the past for you can see th things coming that you might not have actually seen yourself, which can help, you know, help stop big problems within your business. Mm. I mean, Adam's yeah. picked up a point about growth brings its own set of problems. And it does. It absolutely does. I, um, when I when the sales manager that I had grew so, so quickly, some of the problems that that growth brought was was really interesting. Um, and I was, I think, Paul, I turned to you on occasions to to talk about lots of stuff. So, yeah, that's when you really yeah. get desperate, isn't it? <laughs> it wasn't desperate. <laughs> I had to admit that I respected your advice. So shut up. I love you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Ad Adam's uh, Adams made, a, made a comment saying, uh, uh, he disagrees, not quite sure what with, the mentor has the knowledge, skills and depth to take your business to new levels, to turn your vision on its head, introducing new techniques, methods, technology. A coach doesn't necessarily have that experience. I'd, I guess I'd agree with that. 
I think that's a, it's an interesting one of where the edges get blurred. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, so, it depends. Um, I, I think, and uh, I mean, it's true. You can coach. You can coach without having experience of somebody's business. Where if if you're a mentor, you would need that experience. Need that. So but, here's so, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Jackie, I didn't mean to talk over you. No, it's all right. It's all right. I just think it's, it's across the, the boundaries. Um, but a but coach tends to be looking internally at you rather than, yeah. um, than the external business. So here's my question to the group and everybody. Oh, get, you, are, get you asking questions. No! I thought, I, thought, I, thought I, was, I thought I was chairing these bloody panels. <laughs> well, I had a question and I know you wouldn't mind. How do people choose their coach, mentor? Or that was my, you know, that was my next bloody question. I don't oh know. Oh my goodness, Paul! Have we are we all of a sudden morphed into one thing? <laughs> Separated at birth, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, well, let's go to Serena. How you you mentioned that you've had a coach and mentor. How did you go about choosing that person? Sure. So, uh, well, gosh, it's it's a massive question. Actually, it's such a good question as well. I think, well, when I joined the business community, for instance, I just looked around and I started to get to know people. And then I realized that sales was really what I needed to work on. So that was about a specific skill. And that's when I contacted Julie and had some fantastic mentoring with Julie. Thank you. But there's also, <laughs> there's also other areas, for instance, with the business coach that I'm, I'm with at the moment. She was someone who I've worked with before. I did her, her courses in, in marketing and, and social media, these kinds of things. And she reached out to me actually at the beginning of the year. Now she has a specific niche, which is she helps business owners with chronic illnesses. And she writes about how when she had a business coach, her business coach really ground her business to a halt <laughs> because they weren't working with with the um, with her timetable and and her condition. And so she specifically designed um, a method for people with chronic illnesses to run their own business and have more support. So from the early stages, you look at look into getting a VA, you have automated systems, these kinds of things. So that really spoke to me because I know that um, although my health is significantly better, there are certain things that I can't do a very long days, for instance. So I need to work smarter and not harder. So that's a very specific area that I was looking into. So that's why I chose the, the current business coach that I'm with because I realized that there needs to be caution. You need to be able to speak the same language and understand the person that you're coaching. Otherwise you could just be saying, right, you know, wake up at seven in the morning, every morning and just work <laughs> flat out 14 hour days. And for some that would be brilliant, let's do this. And for others, no, that's really not gonna work for me. You know, so I think it's, for me, it was about being specific with what, with what I was looking for. I think that's the, the point is is to do your homework for first before you hire anybody is be clear on what you what you want to get out of it you know what's the, what's the problem what's the issue you want resolving or the part of part of you that needs something and, and being quite clear on that and then then looking for that person isn't it but most of us meet people in the small business world through networking or something you meet all sorts of coaches advisors um uh people and my advice would be to uh hunt around a bit first before plonking at the first one who uh grabs you in the networking and says you should have coaching do you think? <laughs> I think, I think that's the, the same with a lot and of it's really it's really understanding sometimes you know though it's thinking um that you might need someone who's got a different style from you yeah yeah you know, so don't don't find a clone of yourself. You mm. want someone who adds um, yeah. and complements you in some ways, and is going to and is going to challenge you. Yeah, um, I, th I think that so that it needs to be in a way that you can accept. Yeah, and, and like asking you, Serena, to work a, you know, work harder, go out and party every night with people or whatever it was they were pointing in direction would suggest that wasn't someone who was listening to you quite honestly <laughs> right we've got a few comment more comments uh, adam and sarah have given keep us on our toes um so yeah you've been touching on the due diligence uh adam uh is a little bit averse to franchise coaches and mentors which is 
interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll get him on one of these panels one day. And uh, Sarah made another comment there. Uh, both have, ex so I guess she referring to her coach and mentor, both have exceptional knowledge of the business industry. Uh, but when I'm asked to coach people outside of mine, I have a generic set of tools they can mm -hmm. use to move their vision and purpose forward. And I think there's one more comment from back to Adam. There's an oversimplification that hard work equals success. Mm -hmm. It does work on the right things and being efficient and effective with it breeds success. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. That be a, a topic at a future session, I think. Um, so, Julie, how do you go about choosing a coach or mentor for your well, business? I, I don't have a coach as such. Uh, in the definition that we've discussed in the room. Um, I do use mentors and I do use business advisors. Um, if I'm going to each of those, I do my homework on their background, their experience. Um, and I like to get to know them before I'd actually do some work with them because I've got to respect them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you, a, and, you still, and you still came to me. I know, I know. I was going to <laughs> Um, for me, <coughs> respecting somebody and respecting somebody's background experience is key. And this is a th this is me. This <coughs> is one thing that I have. Um, I couldn't take advice from somebody that I deemed was not successful at what they do. Mm -hmm. Um and that's just something inside of me it's it's down to respect it's down to whether i like them mm -hmm. um, i've met various people on the networking circuit over the years that are putting themselves out as a you know a coach a mentor a business advisor but actually <coughs> dig into their backgrounds and experience there's no substance there for them to actually um stand up and be counted mm -hmm. does that make yeah. sense yeah i think so yeah, that's how I how, how I do it. It's it's um it's I look at them. I look at the background and experience. I look at, um, you know, do I like them? Do I respect them? Yeah, yeah. I th I, th I think networking is is a good way of mm. uh, you know finding services in general. Really, and I know I'm a bit biased because obviously run networking groups, but I think you know you get to sort of see the whites of people's eyes. You get to know them over a period of time. Uh, you get to. Uh, you know see and experience what they're able to do and i think you know that those people that aren't necessarily that good at what they do don't tend to last in a networking context because i think they get rumbled quite quickly that they're not uh, uh, maybe the best at what they do and they some sort of, sort of seem to disappear so i think yeah if you find the right sort of networks it's a great place to sort of find uh, absolutely uh, so um, you can judge people a bit but i would always be careful about choosing a coach or an advisor just because you have breakfast with them at a networking event. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I've, you, you, know. see it. you do see it, don't you? Yeah, you well, do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not, not, not for now, but obviously, you know, some not networking groups operate a lockout. And, uh, you know, I, I think that the downside of that or the, the one disadvantage of that is, you know, you feel obligated to choose the person in the room that's the website developer or the coach or the printer or whatever and you know that might not necessarily be the person that you gel with or want to but there's a sort of overriding pressure to, to choose that person mm -hmm. yeah you're absolutely right yes just because you you're in, in the same network group with them doesn't mean you have to do business with them if it doesn't tick your boxes in, in yeah. a number of other ways but totally agree with that so um if people can't afford a coach or a mentor what should they do Julie? Um, interesting one. Um, it depends what, so hold on, as I said, it depends what you mean by they can't afford. I think in the times that I have um, been doing networking training, whatever, I have met various different people that offer services at various different le levels, um, which could be to anybody's pocket. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, there are a range of services and people offer services for different things. I think the other thing that networking brings is you build relationships, you have one-to-ones with people, you build relationships, you build friendships. And, you know, if you've got 
a good friend, um, a business friend, that might be something that you can initially just ask their advice with things. Um, it's like Buzzcom Group. I've had many people phone up and say to me, Julie, can I just pick your brains a minute? I said, of course you can. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't charge for little bits of advice here and there. And over the years, I'm quite happy to give out little nuggets, you know, and just to help somebody. Um, so, yeah, you know, asking for help, buddying up. But don't think that there's nothing out there if you can't spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on something. There's always something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, what, what you mean by can't afford, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, is it because you've chosen to spend the money on something else? So, um, yeah. Serena, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think there, you know, like Julie said there, and uh, Jackie just said, you know, there's there's always a way to to afford something. And in my own experience, I do find that you know, small business owners are very kind and, and generous people because we're we're all in it together. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. And everyone, once you start networking, you realize everyone's very happy to share knowledge or to point to someone who could be of help. Um, I think it's just a, a fantastic community where you can actually get a lot of help and guidance. There are yeah. always ways, uh, whether it's in your within your, within your network or I'll sometimes... Um, like obviously there's you, there's a mentoring um, program here within BizCom, but also other networking groups have something similar where you can get together once a month and, and sort of have a mastermind group and all kinds of different things. So it doesn't necessarily have to cost anything or if it does, I think there are always ways uh, because there are different, so many different offers. People want to be able to help people at different price points. So I think there's always a way. If it's, it depends, I believe it's really about your wish. Yeah. If you really want this, if you want to succeed, you'll find something. And also the more you you give, I think actually Jackie, you wrote a wonderful blog a while ago about giving. <laughs> the more you give, then also the more you'll receive, people will want to help you out. So I think it's um, just having that, having that uh, spirit of giving and uh, without ex expecting anything and, and things will just come and people will help. And also don't be afraid to ask if you need some help. I think that's a big one is to ask. And to ask before you run out of money. Yeah. 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 Is, is put your pride on one uh, on one side mm. and, and acknowledge that you can't know it all, you know. But there are there are organizations, um Stemlet, for example, I think give some sort of advice and, and support to business owners. I've just been um doing some work with the business and IP centre, which is attributed to the British Libraries. Um They've got kickstart programs, there's grants for startup businesses, and there's some training and some mentoring around that. So there are some things out there that will help and support other than what we've discussed. Yeah, I think so, wherever you are in the country, you know, I think it's worth looking and sort of seeing what services are available because there will be some potentially subsidised things or uh, free mentoring schemes, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, that are available to you. So I think, you know, that that you still, I think you still need to do your due diligence in that, you know, and, uh, you know, whoever you're assigned to just check out uh, their background and make sure they're the right person for you. So I think the same rules apply. But yeah, there are services out there for people that um, that uh, can support a small business. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, also there are, there are people that will set themselves up as accountability groups. I know, Paul, you've just recently launched one, haven't you, haven't you which yeah. is... Checks which in is, the post. Yeah, thank you. That's all right. Shameless post. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, but there are other people that have put their own accountability groups in place mm -hmm. with people that they know. Um, so, yeah, there's there's lots of things that people can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, fundamentally, back to the original question, I, I, I do feel that every business should seek support along the way. Um, you know, it's tough trying to do it all on your on your own, whether that's a, a coach, a mentor, an advisor, an accountability partner, whatever it might be. Um, and I think, you know, you need different things as your business evolves mm -hmm. and, th and things change and, you know, you have different needs, different wants. Uh, but I think I, I don't know. What, what is your thing? Do you think the majority of businesses tend to do it on their own and try and make it work? Or do you think the majority actually do? seek and find the help help they want what, what are your views on that i think most um i think <coughs> there's a lot more acceptance of coaching i remember when um 
20 years ago now, Paul, <laughs> set up um, in coaching and it, it was very new to the British market, you know, and to, to businesses. And it was seen as something that people who were failing did, you know. Um, but uh, I think now more and more people you meet, um, quite, you know, very small businesses uh, uh, as well as larger, will will have some kind of coach, mentor, support mm. in place. Mm. I, I don't think it's. Um, I think it's much more accepted now. Well, let, let's face it, we wouldn't be in business if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. There is all that. I think, I think it is becoming pretty common, really. You, get, you, have, you can have a coach for anything, really, isn't it? You want to do your social media, then you have a social media coach. <laughs> you know, because people know it's, it's so much easier, it's so much more effective just to talk to someone who knows what they're doing, and then you learn in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, think, I think for me, a really key time for people to to really sit and think about it is when they start up. Yeah. Um, because there's so much that they need to do, they need to understand. Um, there might be skills gaps in there. Um, and there's always something to help and support somebody. Um, but, you know, the help is there to help your business be successful. Um, and it really keep, gets you on the right track. And then as your business grows and develops, you can pull in other things. But that startup bit, that first, you know, six months within business is a really, really key time where, you know, if you're on your own, do, my advice is do look for some help and support somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. That's really those vital first, uh, first checks into the business. Yeah. It keeps, it keeps you going. It just does wonders for people, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 So, Did you say checks then? Did you mean actually yeah. written checks, as in money checks? Well, it checks into the post. I'm, I'm an old fashioned girl. I was going to say, you're, you're back 20 years ago, Jackie. Um, you know, so, no, she, must have been, she must have been a child when she started out. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, the I, money, you, unless the money come, comes into your bank account it's all a waste of time isn't it yeah sure i mean you know as, as, as we all know the statistics are against you know startups succeeding in the in the first year so it is is very crucial that you know you find that yeah, support yeah. somewhere that's quite interesting it, it, i was reading something the other day it's actually the second year that things start going awry is it really okay yeah yeah, more just... businesses fail in the second year than the first. You get through the first year, and then the second year it gets tough. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, yeah. Mm. So yeah, I, and again, back to his question, I, I think that um, you know, just having some guidance, whatever it might be, uh, whether it's just somebody you buddy up with, you know, shoulders cry on, ear to bend, every now and again, whatever it might be, um, I think that that you will find those people out there that are more than happy to do that. Um, <clears throat> so it doesn't have to cost you money. You know, you can if, if you if you can't afford it for whatever reason, then I think you can find that support. Um, and you should, particularly if you're new in business, you know, go and get that advice, go and get that feedback from people. So really, you're not making the same mistakes that all of us made on our journey. You know, make new ones, make different ones. That's fine. But don't don't make the same ones that can be overcome just by you being advised because you don't you know you don't know what you don't know at the end of the day do you and that, that's the Great. domain i guess that, yeah. that all of us working is supporting those people with the that they don't know what they don't know um yeah uh, absolutely yeah, agree. any any final comments any final pointers any final tips for anybody listening on this topic Round don't feel you have to be completely on your own in your journey for your business reach out to others and be supported along the way thank you serena julie I'm going to mirror what Serena said. Copycat. Jackie? Yeah. Yes, get, get out and about and meet lots of people. That's what I would say. Yeah, so surround yourself. Put them out a bit. Surround yourself with positive people. So yeah. I think I think we'll end it there, guys. Thanks ever so much for your contribution today. Um, next yeah. time, we're these, these are every Tuesday at 11 a.m. live streaming. Um, and then the replays are available uh, online as well. Uh, next time, we're going to be having a finance uh, panel and uh, with the current climate and potentially a recession looming, I think we're long overdue a, a recession. We're just going to look at, you know, what can you do 
in the finance world to uh, put yourself uh, with a, as firm a foundation as you can. So that'll be next week. Um, so thanks again. Thanks for those that tuned in live and thanks for those that are listening on the replay. If you do have any further questions, just put your comments wherever you're listening to this and uh, I'll tag the experts in and they can respond to you accordingly. So thank you very much.